All right, so delta V is going to be the key thing that we're going to be talking about quite a bit. So how do we actually generate delta V in a rocket? Now, if I wanted to change my velocity, I'd just push off the ground and run, okay? Yep. That was one meter per second rather than nine <laughs> kilometers per I, second. I'm glad it's not a kilometer per second, let me tell you. But in space, you've got nothing to push against, really, yep. unless you carry it with you. Okay, okay. So the way spacecraft work is they basically have to throw something out the back. Uh, to, and then yeah. the recoil from that makes them go forward. They can't push off anything because there's nothing to push against. Space is a vacuum, pretty close. So the more stuff that comes out that way pushes you that way. Yes. Now, the normal way it works is a rocket. Uh, but in principle, it could be just an astronaut throwing hammers out the back or something like that. You can have a whole bunch of rocks. Be a lot of rocks and a lot of hammers, but I, you're right. They're losing mass and energy one way, propelling them the opposite way. Yes. So this, uh, the... Uh, physics of this is worked out by the Russian physicist Tsiolkovsky and his original thought experiment was having a boat and throwing rocks out the back and what he realized was that the first rock you throw is not going to make much change to the speed because yep. your boat is full of rocks and is very heavy and you could start to make a heavy rope but as you throw more and more rocks out the boat's getting lighter and lighter with every rock you throw so the last rock is going to give you much more change in velocity than the first rock because right. you've got rid of most of your fuel now, of course, rockets don't actually work by throwing rocks out the back. The principle you could, you could put a mass driver on an asteroid and fire rocks out the back. They actually tend to work by firing the fuel out the back. So essentially, instead of throwing the rocks out, we're throwing the fuel out in the form of... Hot gas. Hot gas. <laughs> yes, as you can see here with the launch of a Saturn V rocket. And oh, here for the uh, space, space shuttle. shuttle. Who doesn't like a good rocket? But, but this is what's happening, right? The fuel which was stored in these tanks is being thrown out the other end, propelling you up. It's just really hot, real, uh, really energetic, meaning you get a lot of speed. Going out much faster. And Tsiolkovsky worked out the rocket equation, or the Tsiolkovsky yes. rocket equation. So we're sorry to show you equations, but we'll try and... I think we have to have this one. Yes. But we'll explain slowly and carefully how it all works and how you use it. That's right. So what we've got here is four things. Wet mass, dry mass, Delta V and VE. Now, Delta V is the thing that we're trying to, we're trying to do. This is the important thing, right? That's what yeah. we want. So we'll know this because of our mission. Like if you want to go to low Earth orbit, we need, we need to be about nine kilometers a second of Delta V. All right, so we say we're going to low Earth orbit. That's going to determine what s Delta V we need. So now, all right, so now we have to figure out then... Everything else. Everything here. else. So what else we've got? VE is how fast you're throwing the stuff out the back of your rocket. Ah, okay. Are you throwing one rock every five minutes or are you furiously dumping those well, rocks it's out? It's the speed at which the yes. rocks are going. So um, this is going to, for most rockets, it's going to be how fast the rocket fuel is This is the fuel speed, is essentially, the of the re rocket fuel reaction. Yeah. Yep. So this is the velocity ratio. So it's the velocity delta V you're trying to achieve divided by how fast you fire your... Yep. Uh, your gas out the back of your rocket and this is e to the power that that means it's an exponential okay which means this ratio is going to really matter okay because it's that means it's not just going to go up one by one it's going to go up exponentially, exponentially. <laughs> very famous during the covid world but in this case it's going to be a positive thing that's going to be a net well <laughs> so if you're trying to achieve a very large change of velocity and don't have much you're throwing exactly. your rocks out slowly from the back of your rocket this is going to be large this is going to be exponentially large that's right like a covid outbreak it gets the entire world and then some and then we've got wet mass and dry mass so wet mass is how much your rocket weighs when it's full of fuel okay so the wetness of the fuel essentially is what so we put it on the scale when it's on the launch pad when it's all full of fuel that's right whereas dry mass is what it weighs when all the fuel is gone ah uh, so this is the engine the uh, rocket body and also the payload yeah so the payload is what you actually care about it might yep. be whether it's the astronauts or the rocket probe you're sending to Mars, yep. whatever it might be and then you've also got the fuel tanks and the yep. engines and everything else and so all that together is the dry mass but the wet mass is all that plus the fuel okay so you can see that if you're trying to achieve a very large delta V and you don't have, you're throwing your fuel out slowly out the back, then this is going to be large. Yep. So exponential of that's going to be very large, yep. which means you need an awful lot of fuel to support a very small amount of dry mass. Yep. Okay. And we can plot a graph of that. So here's a convenient graph. So this is the delta V over VE, the exhaust yep. that we just that's talked about. That's the velocity about. ratio. And this is the mass ratio, which wet is mass the to dry dry wet, mass. wet mass over dry mass. Now you can just if you've got a scientific calculator, you can do exponents of this. Yep. Uh, if you want to use a spreadsheet like Excel, you can just you can type exp of something correct. if you want to work it out. I'll show how to do that in the notes below this video. But 
Oh, you can just use this graph. Yep. So what it means is if your delta V is equal to VE, yep. so let's say you're trying to achieve nine kilometers a second to low Earth orbit, and your rocket exhaust is also nine, nine kilometers, kilometers a second, second, then you're about one, yep. which if you read across here means about two or three, which means your wet mass is going to be two or three times bigger than your dry mass. All right, that doesn't sound... So if you're trying to launch 100 kilos payload in space... You need space, 300 kilos, 200 kilos of fuel. Yeah, something like that. All right. Doesn't sound too bad. Okay. But let's actually do the figures in the next video. Great.